This week, we're going to look at change point detection with the Ruptures Library. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, we're going to look at finding change points in a different way than we have in the past. Normally, we've done something like take the derivative or the second derivative and look for going outside of some kind of bound there. But we know that derivatives with real data can be noisy, so then we have to smooth and condition our signals and do some other tricks. There's a library called Ruptures, though, that specializes in change point detection. And there are many different methods that it has to do that that are outlined here in the documentation. But we're going to use a relatively simple one called a linearly panelized segmentation. And we're going to see if we can use this method to find a frontal passage in mesonet data. So let's go on over to the notebook. I've got some data from November 2nd of 2011. This is the Norman site if you want to follow along. And this is a relatively significant frontal passage. We get a large air temperature drop. We also get a pretty clear wind direction swing. So let's go into our notebook and do some imports. I'm going to import pandas as pd, numpy as np, of course matplotlib.pyplot as plt, the ruptures library as rpt. So first we need to read our data. For that we're going to use pandas. There's our mesonet time series file. We know it's white space delimited. And that we want to skip those first two rows. We've talked quite a bit about reading mesonet files if you want to go back and look at those MetPy Mondays. So let's make a quick plot of our data. I'm going to twin the x and we're going to plot air temperature. And we'll make that in a nice tab red. And then we're going to plot wind direction. Except we want that to be on our b-axis. All right, and you and I can both clearly see here where the frontal passage is. It's where we lose about you know, 10 degrees Celsius and have a wind direction shift of over 100 degrees. This is pretty clearly the frontal passage right here towards the end of this record. So there are some other interesting things going on. In addition to just, say, the normal diurnal temperature change, we've got this little bump here. Uh, and we see a corresponding wind bump. So there are a few features happening in here. Now with something this clean, we might be able to get a derivative to work, but especially in the wind data, look how much noise there are. So let's use ruptures and see what we can find. So first we're going to try just looking at the air temperature. So our algorithm we're going, and this is the recommended nomenclature from the ruptures documentation. PELT is the method. Specific model that we're going to specify is a radial basis function. And much like scikit-learn, they came up with this great API design that's been used by so many other libraries now. We're going to call a fit and a predict method. So we're going to fit our data. And it does need a numpy array, so we're going to call that values. It will not work with just a data series. And then we're going to get our predictions. So on our algorithm object, we're going to call the predict method. And we can specify a penalty magnitude. In this case, I'm going to use 20. Again, you can kind of play with this. It, in the end, is changing how much penalty there are for nonlinear things. And that will give you more or less detections. So how can we plot this? Well, I'm going to create another plot. 
I'm going to plot T air. And what we get back from the algorithm is the rows where it thinks a change has happened. So I'm going to plot air temperature in red, and then for each row in our result, I'm going to use an AX V line at X equals that row number. I'm going to make it black and the line style a double dash there. Oh, and that needs to be subplots. Okay, so what we see is we got four predictions. We can see here we're coming down at a pretty fast rate, and then we see a change point. We've got this relatively constant period, and then we start going up. Here's our frontal passage, though we mainly pick up this kink in that frontal passage, and then we've got something here at the end. Now we could go through and change our penalty. Okay, so that gives us some more detections. We could go up. Okay, maybe that gives us just the front. But I'm gonna stick with 20 for now. Okay, so that's on the air temperature. What if we did this based on the wind? So I'm gonna copy and paste these cells, except we're going to do it on wind direction. And if we do it based on wind direction, we see we get a few less picks. We still got that anomalous pick at the end. But yep, we pick out the front passage start pretty clearly here. And I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Maybe it's because we're going from this somewhat constant wind direction period to increasing wind azimuths. Uh, we could reduce that a little bit. Okay, now we're getting something on this bump or we could increase it, maybe even up to 40. Okay, we're still picking up a change here, so it must be the slope change. So wind does an okay job, temperature does an okay job, but it would be much better if we could use both of them because we know that a frontal passage is going to have a corresponding wind and temperature change. Now, if we look in our fit method, we see that we can supply a signal, and the shape is samples, comma, features. So we can specify more than one feature. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need to build an array that has our two features. So I'm going to create my array. I'm going to use NumPy's vStack method to vertically stack these two things I'm going to pass to it, which one is T air dot values, one is wind direction, dot values. Okay, so there we're getting our array. Let's look at the shape of it though. So that's two comma 288. Remember we want samples comma features. So this is the wrong shape. The easiest way to fix this is with a transpose on the end. And now we have everything in the correct shape. So we're going to copy our prediction logic again. Except now we're going to fit A, our array. We're going to copy our plot code. We're going to go back to a twinned X. And we'll plot T air, color, tab red. We'll change our wind direction to be brown. And there we can see that we've got the frontal passage pretty clearly marked at the, the beginning. We've got this change point that we think is a slope change in our wind direction, but also it corresponds to this temperature minima. So we're getting a little bit more insight now. We can do things like change our tolerance, and now we're picking this wind temperature anomaly pretty much right at the peak, whereas that was not nearly as well resolved 
with one feature alone. So I do encourage you to go take a look through the ruptures documentation. As I said, there are other methods than what we've used here, but it's a really nice little package with a great functionality to help you automatically detect when things change, because that's so often what we're looking for in meteorology is we're combing through mountains of data, trying to find the interesting changes. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.